Dr. Tim Joshin. Today we're going to talk about alopecia. And what is alopecia? Does anybody know here? Hair loss. Hair loss. That's all it means. That's the medical term for hair loss. So just a little background. Uh, we're going to be talking about alopecia on the scalp. Now you can have alopecia anywhere in your body, but the majority of the talk is really about losing hair on your head. We're born with about 100,000 hairs on our head and um, our hair cycles. So it is in the growth phase, the resting phase, exfoliation phase. So the growth phase is called antigen and 90% of our hairs are in the growth phase. 10% um, are in the resting or exfoliation phase called catagen and telogen. Telogen is when your hair is falling out and then the hair is going to recycle and start growing again in the antigen phase. So when we look at alopecia, there are two types of alopecia. We classify it that way. There's scarring and non-scarring. We're really not going to talk about scarring alopecia at all today because this is very rare and it's not something that we're going to commonly see. So the most common type of hair loss is going to be androgenetic or, um, or female pattern hair loss. Now, they're different. The, um, the majority of men start to lose their hair in their 20s and they say it can be up to 100% of men are going to lose some of their hair. Women don't start to lose their hair until their 40s or 50s and the difference is, I really believe that they say up to 50% of women lose their hair. I think it's closer to 100% like men. As you grow older, you're going to lose some of your hair. You'll rarely see a woman with a full head of hair, and you're almost never going to see a guy who's older and has a full head of hair. So, I mean, you, women notice this. Now, one of the things to also to keep in mind is you have to lose about 50% of your hair before you start to notice that your hair is falling out. Pretty sad, huh? So, and there, the difference between um, female pattern hair loss and male pattern hair loss is one of the things is the pattern. So, men tend to lose the front and um, ultimately just have a horseshoe ring of hair left. So, we lose it on the top and also in the temporal region. Women just really tend to lose it in the, the central part of the scalp here. And it just tends to thin as opposed to go completely bald. Now, um, so with women, you can, I can typically say with confidence, you're going to thin, but you're never going to go completely bald like a man may do. If you see men, though, they do usually retain a little bit of hair on the posterior part of their scalp here um, because this is hairs that are resistant to hormonal um, hair loss. We don't completely understand the process with female pattern hair loss. With men, we do realize that the hair follicles are sensitive to androgens or male hormones, and so they will um, lose the, the part of the hair that is sensitive to male hormones. Okay, so men starts early in their 20s, women in their 40s or 50s. So for men, we have different treatments than we do for women. For men, the best treatment we have out there is Propecia, and Propecia is an androgen inhibitor. And so this is actually the best treatment option for male pattern hair loss. And that I was actually an investigator on this drug when I was in um, my residency. And we found it caused dramatic um, improvement in hair loss. So it stopped hair from falling out, it thickened hair, and it actually caused hair to regrow. Now, one of the caveats here is you see men that have the shiny hair. Those hairs have not completely gone away, but they've gone completely dormant, and their skin looks like it's, it's almost scarred down. When you get to that point, the hairs are dormant, and you, it's really hard to get them to revive. So it's probably not going to help somebody who's completely bald. So the sooner you catch this, the, the more likely you are to have regrowth and to um, prevent hair from falling out. Another treatment that we've had that's been around for a long time is Rogaine. Rogaine comes in a 5% foam now. It's the best treatment that we have in terms of that. We don't really know what causes it. There, there are different theories, but nobody really knows why it happens. But it's also helpful. In our office, we sell the low-level laser energy. Um, it's actually a uh, laser, it's an LED, and that actually stimulates hair regrowth. What it does is it turns the hair follicles back on um, and helps them to start growing again. Now, this again is best when you start earlier. If you've gone to the, the bald phase where your hair is all scarred down, you probably aren't going to get as great of a result. For men, we also have hair transplants, and these are terrific. I like to use them in combination with these other products because we want to maintain the hair. If you're going to transplant the hair from this resistance strip back here and put it up here, we want to maintain the rest of the hair that you have. For women, it's a different scenario. We have basically uh, one great treatment option, and that's Rogaine. Um, 
Initially, studies showed that Propecia was not helpful for women. There are some studies that show if you have a hormone imbalance, um, such as too, much too many androgens in your system, this may be helpful for women. But most women don't have a hormone imbalance, so the, the studies aren't conclusive that it will help. Now, for desperate women who are post-menopausal, we can use this. We don't want to use this in young women who are childbearing age because if they even touch the pills, it can cause birth defects in a child. Doesn't mean that men can't use it. You know, it may lower their sperm count a little bit, but it doesn't lead to infertility or anything like that. Um, women can also do hair transplants, and then we also do have the capillaries for them. There is a 5% foam for women. This is kind of a new thing. Before it was just a 2%. Now there is a 5% for women. Some of the other things that we sell in the office are we sell vitamins um, to make sure that we have a nutritional balance because that can cause hair loss. And um, we also sell a shampoo that may be beneficial as well. And a spray. And a spray. Yes. Okay. So now, telogen and effluvium is the big thing to differentiate from androgenetic or female pattern hair loss, male pattern hair loss, whatever you want to call that. Oh, the other thing I do want to say is, in terms of male pattern, female pattern hair loss, it is um, genetically inherited. That's where the androgenetic component comes from. And there's a lot of um, myths about what causes it. A lot of people think it comes from the maternal side. But now we've found that it um, can be caused from either side of the family. So you can inherit uh, hair loss from either the male or female side. Telogen effluvium is the thing that we're trying to differentiate from androgenetic alopecia. In my practice, honestly, I almost never, ever see this. This is something that's so rare, but it's, um, you know, it's something that we have to consider. So what is telogen effluvium? It's, it, telogen is the resting phase or the exfoliation phase of the hair where it's falling out. So your hair starts to fall off, fall out. And there's a variety of reasons that can cause this. These are things that have impacted your body that are causing it to be shocked. And so it's not focusing on the, on the hair, so the hair is gonna fall out. And it can be anything from thyroid disease, which is just a metabolic um, uh, hormone that we have, um, hormonal changes, you all have heard probably after a woman gives birth, hair falls out. Is that a mystery to any, any of you girls? You're probably going to lose some hair. That's a mystery? Who didn't know that? <laughs> okay, I was going to say, I thought everyone knew that. Now, did any, any of the women here who've had children experience that, where their hair fell out? Ashley had her hair fall out, fell out. Okay, so it's really common. So most of the women here have experienced that. It can also happen if you're on... Um, if you're going through menopause because you're having hormonal changes as well. Physical illness, you know, when I was a resident, they always said that the most common form of telogen effluvium is women having periods, so they're losing iron and blood. And so this is the number one cause, so you always want to check for iron deficiency. And, you know, there's still controversy about this, but I have to tell you in 14 or 15 years, well, no, it's actually longer than that. In, <laughs> God, I'm not going to say how long. <laughs> no, I'm not. In all the years I've been doing this, I've never, ever seen any woman with a, a low iron level. Now, have you, have you guys ever seen a low iron? No. Some, of the, some scientists say that it's because really women need to have a much higher um, level of iron in their blood than the, than the labs track. I don't really know if I believe that or not, but that's one of the things. So anemia can also cause it, um, loss of ferritin, low, low iron in our body, body can cause it. Any major systemic disease can cause it because again, our body is focused in on the disease and it causes our, our hair to fall out. Major surgeries, nutritional deficiencies. So if you're bulimic or anorexic, you know, you've seen girls lose their hair. Um, and finally, there are certain medications that'll cause us to lose our hair. We have a list of that. So what do we do to differentiate androgenetic alopecia from telogen effluvium? Because if you're going to have to have one, would you rather have androgenetic alopecia or telogen effluvium? Somebody Second answer. One. Second one. Why? Because you can fix it. Yeah, exactly. Because it's a systemic disease that we can fix. So we want to figure this out so we can reverse it. So what we do is, first thing we do is in, um, in uh, androgenetic alopecia, your hair isn't falling out. It's just getting smaller and shrinking and starting to go away. With telogen effluvium, chunks of hair are falling out. So one of the things we do is we do a hair pull test. If you pull on a normal person's hair, if 10% of the, um, or 90% of the hairs are in the growth phase and you pull on the hair, how many hair should fall out if you pull out 10? 90% are in the growth phase. How many should fall out? One. 10%. So if you pulled out 100, 10 should fall out. 
So that's the first test. If a clump of hair is falling out, there's something going on. Number one. Number two is you're normally shedding about 100 hairs a day. So we have people count their hairs. So some women are like, oh my God, I lost all this hair on, on Friday. And I'm like, well, do you wash your hair all week? They're like, no, I wash my hair on Friday. So <laughs> if none of the hair has come out from Monday to Friday, that's seven days, they should have lost about 700 hairs on that day because we typically lose about 100 hairs, right? So you really want to keep a diary on, on how many hairs you're losing. And so you have to count them. It sounds like a big pain in the butt, but it's really not that big of a deal. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to do labs. What we're going to do is we're going to um, look at the blood and we're going to see, do they have anemia? Do they have iron deficiency? Do they have thyroid disease? Do they have um, an autoimmune disease that might be attacking their hair? Do they have hormone imbalances? Do they, do they have high androgens? And um, so with this, the treatment obviously is fix the underlying cause, stops your hair from falling out, it's going to regrow. So next one we have, and this is one of the most common ones that we're going to see. This is called alopecia areata. It's very distinctive. It's patches of hair loss, you know, round circular patches of hair loss. So um, with this one, it's an autoimmune disease. We believe that the, our body is attacking our hair follicles. And so what it's doing is it's causing those to fall out. And you can see on men, it can, um, I, I wasn't really going to talk about, you know, anywhere but the scalp, but it is um, one of the things that you will, one of the things that help us to diagnose this is if it's happening in other areas of the body. Now, the differential diagnosis can include lichen plantar pilaris, syphilis, blah, 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 this huge list of things, but this is one of the most common forms of hair loss. So with this, considered autoimmune. Um, treatment options, the best one I think is to do Kenlog injections, those are steroid injections, that cuts down on the inflammation. We also have topical anti-inflammatories and we also can encourage it with Rogaine. There's some other agents that are irritating the scalp which try to change the composition of the inflammatory cells, uh, but that's more than we really need to discuss today. Okay, so that is the uh, talk on the most common cause of alopecia and I'm happy to answer questions before we do our test.